So good afternoon, guys. Today is March 31st. We've moved on to the next training station today. We have 10 birds left. The blue check that was always late didn't come back last night and wasn't here this morning. So I think that is it for him. I'm kind of surprised he lasted this long. But uh, we have moved on. We are out of the dog leg now. We've moved out of the Applegate. I-5 is a bit over that direction. You can kind of barely see it over there. I don't know if you can see the traffic moving. Um, and we're here at an orchard. I think this is one of Harry and David's orchards. If you've heard of the Harry and David company, they sell fruit and all that. We've got some vultures flying. Birds won't be happy about that. So last time we trained from over there off the back side of that ridge is where we came. So we're another seven miles out. We've jumped, we've jumped from uh, 26, or I guess we're, we're six miles further. We've jumped from 26 to 32. We have a crosswind blowing through this valley. Conditions are good. Had a little bit of rain yesterday, a headwind. Um, they left the toss site pretty fast, but they were definitely slowed down, I think, by the headwind and the rain. Um, so this will be a challenge for them, but we are out of the dog leg and the mineralized belt as far as training station, so should in theory be better. I had talked to Russell Kahn last night after yesterday's toss, and he said, you know, probably from this point on, you know, the birds are, you know, if you've made it this far, the birds are going to be pretty consistent coming back. So, so let's get going with the 10 and get them going. Come on, guys. Over the orchard. Definitely some wind pushing them. Really pushing them down. And it looks like I really can't zoom out in this mode. I must be in a different video setting. But uh, that is them on their way. They should, in theory, go over this direction and turn and go around that ridge. Or they could go through that, that uh, gap right over there into the Applegate. Kind of two choices they can go. But uh, that's the toss done. They're on their way. We will head home, see what happens. But uh, 32 miles from here shouldn't be much. It's just a little jump for them. See you guys soon. So I've been back a while and just got my first six. I got five on one drop, then the Black Widow Cock on one drop. So I got the Black Widow Cock back, the Blue Check Pied. Black Widow was on his own, a little bit behind him. Or maybe I've only got uh, five total so far. Uh, blue bar splash black widow the uh, blue bar to Vrent. another blue bar to Vrent. so that's half of them back it took them a while um it's been uh i had talked to russell cotter earlier he had tossed out ahead of me earlier this morning and he some of them did pretty well but about half of them were were, were still out when i last talked to him so so not not a great return time, but so far um, that's five back. So that's half. Um, took them a while, um, about an hour and forty minutes, I guess, to cover that time. So definitely some really really tough conditions, apparently. So I'll continue to watch for the rest. So I've got nine back now. It's a couple minutes later. I am missing. Looks like a blue bar different cock. He's been late once in a blue check 
Devrent Hen, that she's usually on the first drop. Interestingly enough, like I said, I have nine. The blue check that's always late and lands in the trees, he came in on the last drop that came in. Um, so one of these hens coming in picked him up from somewhere. Who knows where the hell he was? But he got picked up on the way. So I've got two still out, which is a concern. Um, two of them, you know, the two that are missing, you know, matter. But uh, I have nine. Obviously, that blue check cock that's always late. He's uh, not really race material, so it's it's really only eight. So here is my missing different cock. Um, this bird has been late before, but you would not believe the condition. This bird just came in. Um, you can see a bit of blood here. I found him on the landing board a second ago. I don't know how long he'd been there. But uh, look at this guy. This leg. He's got a broken leg. I mean, it's actually completely displaced. Let me see if I can get him. This leg is completely displaced. This pink band, or it looks like a red band now because he's bleeding profusively. All those feathers missing off of his breast. That leg's broken. And uh, look how much he's bleeding. Just like a stuck pig. Um, so he's off the race team, but he made it home um, for now. Um, I mean, he can't walk. I don't even know how he flew here. He can just hobble on one leg. Losing a lot of blood. I'm going to have to. So I'm going to have to do some patching on him, but I can't believe he came home. I mean, I've seen birds come home tore up, but he's got a, that leg is completely displaced and he's missing all kinds of feathers on the chest. I would say that's a bird of prey strike probably, and there may be some puncture marks in there. I'm going to get him patched up. I'm still missing one hen. The hen that's missing is usually a first drop bird. I kind of fear the worst for her, but she's not here. Um, but he is a mess, but he came home. What a tough son of a bitch. And that is the reason I chose to, when I decided to start racing, I wanted to rent was because they are tough as nails. I mean, this, this bird is pretty beat up. So that's it. I'm going to patch him up right now, get him in isolation, but, uh, wow. Just can't believe it. I can't believe he was sitting on the landing board. So it's a few hours later. It's dark now. It's about uh, 11 o'clock at night. Here is the Devrent cock that, as best as I can tell from, from looking at him, he, uh, I think he hit a wire. When I went back and reviewed, it's either a wire or he hit some other object. When I went back and reviewed the video from the toss, um, the team got pushed pretty low by the wind and they were really just kind of skimming the treetops there at that orchard. And I'm thinking he may have clipped the, the trunk or a branch on one of them, is my guess. Um, he's got no puncture marks, so it wasn't a bird of prey strike. But he is very heavily bruised in the breast, and that leg is absolutely shattered. Um, unfortunately, it was, it's the femur that is shattered, opposed to the sh opposed to the shank. So, unfortunately, I couldn't splint it up or anything. I pretty much just had to mop the blood up, get the uh, stop the blood from flowing, put some direct pressure on it. Um, clean it up with some uh, colloidal silver and basically get it wrapped up. I mean, liter literally a band-aid job. But uh, he is in here. He's still on the go. He, he, you know, he looks all right. He's fluffed up. But, uh, you know, at least he's standing up on the one leg. So I, I think he's going to make it. He uh, looks like he's drank some water. 
Doesn't look like he's eaten, but uh, if I was him, I probably wouldn't want to eat either. But uh, needless to say, what a toughie. You know, I mean, that's this is the reason I chose De Vrance, is I, I had a friend back in the 90s. I'll walk him back up. I had a friend back in the 90s have De Vrance, and he would uh, tell me some of the stories about some of the returns on his race birds, you know, hitting trees and coming back with sticks punched through them and... He had one with a broken wing that he found walking up his long driveway. And his driveway was about a half mile long. He lived up on top of a hill. And he wound up seeing this pigeon from the top of the loft down there on the... Walking up the driveway. And he didn't think much of it. And he looked back down, you know, 10 or 15 minutes later. And the bird was still walking up the driveway. And then as it got closer, he realized it was one of his... And he went down and fetched it, and it was a bird that had disappeared from uh, a race a couple weeks before. He, has, he had no idea where it got injured or how close to home it was, but uh, he always told the story as it was his Devrent that walked home from the race. So they are tough. I think this guy, he's, he's going to be all right. Um, he'll never be on the race team again. Um, it was only a 30 mile toss or 32 miles. I but uh, I think the the injury took place moments after the toss. Going back and looking at the video, that you can see him, you can see the team being pushed pretty low and against the treetops. And I think maybe at one of those points that he broke that that he hit something at that point. I didn't have a zoom in. I had a kind of a weird setting on the video that I. This phone's got some issues right now, and it looked like it cycled out of my previous video setting, and needless to say, I couldn't zoom in as the team was flying. So I didn't get a, a close look on, didn't get a close look in person, and also the video didn't show it too closely, but I'm pretty sure the, the injury was sustained at the toss site. Um, there was a, definitely a blue bar, very, very low, and looked like it, it was awfully close to one of those trees. So I'm thinking it happened then. Um, on the other side, the other good news, in addition to him coming home and being fine, the blue check hen that is usually on the first drop that was missing, she returned, strangely enough, after him. Uh, she didn't have a mark on her. But uh, as I've mentioned before, it is a tough, tough race course. As I was talking to you know, when I was talking to Russell Codd earlier, he had uh, he tossed earlier today also, and his returns were also as slow as mine, really. Um, and he had a lot of birds still out. The last time I talked to him, early afternoon, I mean, I suspect he's probably got most of them back. But he had, he had a tough time also, and I mean, it is a tough race course. And the problem is, if they if they go the if they get blown the wrong direction and go up the wrong valley, next thing you know, they're they're over on the coast or they're you know down into Northern California and you don't see them again. Um, a lot of birds from here wind up blown off course, sometimes 60, 70 miles on training tosses and wind up going the wrong direction. And you kind of wonder how they wind up there. But we think that's what happens is that they wind up going up the wrong river valley and over top of a hill. And next thing you know, they just flying and flying and flying. And they're, you know, they can be a hundred miles off. You have no idea. But that is it, guys. I just wanted to give a little update on this different cock. Obviously, he's a stock pigeon now. He should probably have a name. One of you guys can, I'm sure, come up with a good one. Um, not really a person who names pigeons. A lot of other people do. But uh, let's name this one. One of you guys can pick it. Pick something suitable for his uh, experience here. But uh, from now on... Um, He'll be here in the stock loft, so right now he'll be in isolation until that leg sorts itself out more. And uh, short, I think short of getting an infection in it, which I don't think, I think the colloidal silver does a pretty good job on that. Short of an infection, I'm not too concerned about him. I just need to watch his eating and drinking, but he does appear to be drinking. And it's, uh, he's still uh, active. Obviously he hasn't lost too much blood. He's you know, he's standing on one foot, so that's uh, that's a positive. If he was fluffed up down in the corner, I'd be super concerned about him. But uh, 
but uh, he's he's definitely messed up. Like I said, that that femur is completely shattered. It is a big compound fracture, too high up near the body to splint it. So I just have to kind of tape it up good and have it have gauze on it and tape it up good and just let it heal up and see what happens. It's probably always going to be a mess and probably always going to stick out away from where it is, is my guess. But uh, that is it, guys. I will talk to you next time. I've got a couple solid days of work coming up here that I've got to attend to. Uh, my work, when, I, uh, when I'm actually out on the work sites, I am sometimes away for a couple days. I just kind of go back and forth. And, uh, you know, it's uh, fortunately I have all these lights and I can feed and water birds at night. But it's uh, kind of work long hours when I, when I do have to do it this time of year. Because we're not we're not mining this time of year, but I've got other business I have to attend to that is mining related, and it it involves some traveling and being pretty far away from civilization. So it is a uh, it's a chore, and it takes a lot of time when I'm away. So the next four days are really full. So there won't be any videos for a, a bit, or probably unlikely to be any. So, but I'll do an update when I can. So talk to you guys later. See you next time.